Greetings, greetings, fellow great levens. Uh, it's Mr. Thatcher again. Uh, welcome back. Now, what we are going to be looking at today is, you know, we are going to be understanding now our 2D shapes, right? Uh, and then now we are going to be also understanding this thing called a sign rule, right? Surely this is something that is foreign to you, but don't worry. Uh, by the end of this video, you would at least understand what uh, a sign rule is, right? But now to put you into perspective, remember that, you know, uh, last year we used to, you know, look at our 2D shapes, right? Uh, we used to calculate 2D shapes whereby we calculate either a, a missing side, an angle of elevation, how to get. Uh, and what was our point of focus last year was usually we used to focus on uh, shapes which used to involve the right angled triangle, right? So now, as a reminder, remember that we used uh, to use the three, you know, trig ratios, which was your sine of theta, because sine of theta, it was given by what? Uh, it was given by opposite over your hypotenuse, your cos of theta, it was given by your adjacent over your hypotenuse, and your tan of theta, uh, it was given by what? Uh, by your opposite over your adjacent let's say if your theta was here right so you are going to look in terms of which ratio uh, that you can probably apply uh, here for example if let's say you are given that this is three you want to calculate uh, the hypotenuse side or let's say you are given this is three this is nine and you want to calculate the value of your theta right so you knew that you are going to use now your sine of theta which was going to be three over uh your what uh three over your nine then therefore your theta was going to be you know shift sign of uh one over three then you calculate what is going to be your value of theta right so this was uh the last year way of uh you know uh calculating the missing side or either your missing angle right however now now what is important is that you know uh not always uh that we are going to be given triangles or rather shapes that are into uh, uh into the or other shapes or triangles that are going to be right angle triangle right so now what we are going to learn today is we are going to learn in terms of uh how to use a sign rule now when you are given a shape that is not necessarily a right angle to triangle right so now uh so it is important to take note that this one you use it uh on shapes which or on triangles that are not right angle to triangle right so now uh according to the sine rule well firstly the sine rule uh is uh given by sine of a over your a which is equals to uh your sine of b uh over your b which is also equals to uh sine of c over uh your c right now i will explain this in detail right uh it can also be given by what you can also take this one to your numerator and this one to your denominator right so which means you can also have it as what uh you can also have it as a over your sine of a which is also equals to what uh a you know uh b i mean this is supposed to be b over your sine of b right uh which is also going to be cos to c over your sine of c right now what that means look uh according to the sign rule we are saying now uh if let's say you are going to have a pair now if you are having here this alphabet as your c now this opposite side uh, which means the angle here uh and then the opposite side to that then it is going to be your small letter c right so now let's look at the other one now if let's say now you are having here this one as your uh your b your angle of b uh the opposite side of that is going to be uh what it's going to be named your small b right or your small letter b right similarly here if you are having your angle a here or your a here the opposite side to that particular angle Therefore, it's going to be your what? It's going to be your side A, right? So what that means, uh, now they are saying, if let's say you are given either an angle here and also the related side, probably just with one other angle and its related side, you can be in a position to calculate either your angle or your try, uh, either your angle or the missing side. Oh, it's okay. So 
uh, and I know you know that for now this might not make sense, but as we continue, we'll see in terms of what that means. Now, for example, we are saying now you only need uh one pair. For example, if you are given that you have let's say your angle of A with the corresponding side, you are going to use angle A with its corresponding side, and you are looking, let's say uh you have angle B and you are looking for the corresponding side of B, which means you are only going to use only these two only, right? You are just going to use these two only. You don't have to use the third one, right? You don't have to use this one as yet because that's uh this is the two things that you are given altogether so uh hopefully this makes sense so now we are saying now for you to be in a position to uh calculate either the missing angle or the missing side you need to at least have uh one pair uh rather the side and the angle that is full and probably the angle and let's say one missing side or a one missing side with an angle right so that's that so now let's get one example and see in terms of what do we mean when we say that now uh, you are given this as your example now uh you are given that you have this particular you know this particular uh triangle and then you are given this angle here right and together with it with its correspondent side and you are required to calculate what is going to be your angle p right now now let's let's go again and check in terms of which one or rather which rule now are we then going to use now what we are going to do is we are going to start by uh you know writing the missing side that we are looking for together with it's what with correspondence uh side right so we are going to say look you are going to take this and you're going to say sign of p right and then remember the p is the angle here over your what uh, over your what your p which is the smallest p which is going to be the side is going to be equals to then now you are going to check which side consists of the angle and also the full pair right and then now let's check so which side consists of an angle and also a full pair yes it's this one which means you have this one and together with what with each side right the angle and together with its side so this is going to be equals to your what your sine of q over your what uh over your q are we together because now in this case we are looking for the angle that's why the angles are uh, the signs of p are going to be in our numerator right so now we are then going to continue no so we are going to say now look your sine of p over what is going to be the the size of p the size of p is given by five uh centimeter which is going to be equal to what is going to be a sine of Q. So this is going to be sine of what? Sine of 50 degrees because we are given that your Q is 50 degrees over what is the corresponding side? It is going to be four. Are we together? So now then you are going to calculate. So this is going to be what? So you can cross multiply, right? Which means you're going to take this five and multiply it that side, right? So which means your sine of P uh, is going to be given by what? Uh, your sine of P is going to be given by 5 uh, sine uh, 50 degrees over your 4, right? Then, therefore, which means now your angle P, your angle P is going to be given by what? So you're going to take this punch in the calculator and say uh, shift, uh, shift sine everything here, which is 5 sine uh uh, sign 50 degrees over 4 then you are going to find what you what you are going to find you are going to find your angle which is 73 comma what comma 2 degrees how to get so which means that is going to be your your site here which is going to be 72 uh 73 point uh 2 degrees right so but this is going to be your reference angle right why is this going to be a reference angle now remember that according to trigonometry right uh your uh, your sign is positive in your first quadrant and also in your second quadrant so which means now we are going to go back now and use uh what we used to use uh in terms of uh the uh, what we used to use in terms of when we used to find the general solution right so what you're going to do now which means you're going to say now look if this is going to be in quadrant uh in quadrant number one if this is going to be quadrant number one 
then you uh, your angle p indeed is going to be 73 point what point two degrees plus k multiply by 360 uh, 360 degrees out to get uh and then now which means this is going to be its angle uh in your first quadrant oh now remember we are also saying uh now your uh this uh your sign is also positive in your second quadrant right so which means your p can also be equals to what it can also be now remember that in your second quadrant it's always 180 subtract your feet right so this is going to be 180 degrees subtract your reference angle which is what in this case it's going to be 73 comma uh two degrees isn't it so plus 360k isn't it so? So therefore, which means the other value of P that you are going to have, it's going to be what? It is going to be 106,8 degrees. Okay. So now this is how you are going to calculate for that uh, missing side. Are we together? So which means if now you are given in terms of which quadrant it, it was, then you are going to, you know, check whether it's in your first quadrant or in your second quadrant, right? However, the one that we are going to take now, it is going to be the 73 point uh two degrees right now let's say uh now the, the other question said now you need to now calculate what is going to be the missing angle of r right now that one is going to be you know uh at least uh easy why why is it so because you already have this angle here you already have this angle here and you know that sum of angles in a triangle they add up to 180 degrees right so you can literally just say now your r your angle r is going to be close to 180 degrees subtract your 50 degrees, uh, 50 degrees plus your 73.2 degrees, right? You can write this. And remember what is going to be the reason there? It's sum of angles in a triangle, right? So therefore your angle R in this case is going to be given by what? Your angle R in this case is going to be given by uh, your, uh, it's going to be given by your 50 uh 6.8 degrees right and if you want to calculate the other one in this other quadrant now you can just do it there it's going to be now what 180 degrees subtract your what subtract uh your uh what is going to be that one now it's going to 106 uh, remember because what you found here it was 106 right so it's going to be 106 uh, 0.8 degrees subtract your 50 degrees right so which means if it was in your second quadrant your angle r was going to be given by your 23 uh comma two degrees out to get so now this is as far as uh when you are given uh let's say a site a correspondent angle and you are looking to calculate for the angle right now let's check another example now where you need to calculate for the missing uh, let's say the missing uh, side. Now let's look at this second example. Now in this second example, look, now the first one, they say you need to find your angle D and the second one, you need to find now side ED, right? So, but our, uh, you know, our point of focus is going to be finding side ED, right? But let's start with the first one. Now, look, they say you need to find out what is your angle D, right? So now for you to find out what is going to be your angle D, what is it that you're going to do? You're going to start here. Now, you're going to check which side corresponds or which side is opposite to that. So can you see that your angle D here correspond uh, with your what with your seven, right? And the other side, that you are also given uh, or rather the other side or the pair that you are given it is these two pair right it is these two pair right so which means what you are going to do you are going to use uh, also those pair to calculate uh, these uh, missing angle and also a side now let's start here so what you are going to do look in this case now you are starting to find out what you're starting to find an angle, right? So if you start to find an angle, you're going to say your sign, uh, your sign of D, remember, because you are looking for sign of D over your what? Over your small letter D. Remember the small letter D represented the side that is opposite to your angle D. Then it is going to be equals to what? Uh, it is going to be equals to your sign of E, which is also going to be 
are divided by what? By your E, right? Remember, it's going to be the side and an angle in a denominator because that's how you are given. How to get. Then now what you are then going to have, now look, this is going to be your sine of D over what is the corresponding side? It is seven, which is going to be equal to, what is going to be your sine of E? Your sine of E, it is going to be sine of uh, 65 degrees over what is going to be your uh your side e and uh, now your side e it is going to be your eight isn't it so and now from here then what is it that you're going to do you are going to say look your sine of d uh in this case is going to be equals to seven sine 65 degrees over what uh over eight then now you are going to find out what is going to be your shift sign of that so which means your d now uh, when you calculate that your D is going to be given by what? It is going to be given by 52.5 degrees, right? That is going to be your angle D. So which means your angle here, your angle D here, it is given by 52 point what? Uh, uh, point 0.5 degrees. I want to get now that is going to be your angle uh, D. Now then let's look at the second question which we are interested on. Now we want to find out what is going to be your E D. We want to find out what is going to be your E D. So now look, you are looking for what now? You are looking for a site. So which means you are going to make your formula to start with the site, right? So this is going to be what now? So this is going to be which uh which side are you looking for you are looking they say et and side et is almost opposite to what to your f so which means actually this is same as side f right so which means this is going to be f divided by what divide by your sign of what uh sign of f sign of f which is going to be cost to uh what is going to be the other one that you are given the pair that you are given look you are still given a full pair of e and your full pair of e it is e over your sign of what your sign of e isn't it so however now what is important uh for us to consider is that do we really have your angle of f right? No, we don't have your angle of F as yet, right? So which means you need to start by calculating now what is going to be your angle F, right? So to find your angle F, so which means your angle F, let's write nicely, your angle F is going to be given by 180 degrees, subtract your 65 degrees, subtract your 52 Point five degrees. Remember, this is because this is your triangle, right? And some of angles in a triangle, they give you 180 degrees, right? So which means now your F, this is your F. Let's write this nicely. This is going to be your F, right? So which means now your angle F, your angle F is going to be given by what? It is going to be given by 62.5 degrees. How to get? Now that you have this side, uh, this angle, then you can uh, calculate uh, your side F. Now, what is important? I know some of you would say, but you already have two sides. Remember, this is not uh, your right angle to triangle. So therefore, you cannot use your theorem of Pythagoras. Please make sure that you don't make that particular mistake. Then now, what you are going to have, look, your F over, this is going to be your six, your sine uh, of 62,5 degrees, which is going to be same as what? What is your E? Uh, your side E, you are given uh, by 8 over your sine of 65 degrees. How to get? And now that you are here, look, what you're going to do now, you're going to cross multiply here, which means your F is going to be given by what? It is going to be given by 8 sine uh, of 62,5 five degrees right remember we take this one you multiply the side right uh divide by sine of your 65 degrees isn't it so so which means now uh what is going to be your f now you punch that thing in your calculator you are going to find out that your f actually your value of your f it is going to be close to seven comma eight centimeters how to get so this is going to be given by 7.8 centimeters so this is how you then calculate for your missing site if you are given this in trigonometry